Welcome into the latest episode of the Five on the Floor podcast on the Five Reasons Sports Network. This qualifies as an emergency podcast, so we're not going to go full length today, but we do want to tell you about our great sponsor, Seltzer Mayberg. That's a law firm. You can find them in North Miami, but they handle cases from all over the state. They've got someone on their website at onecalllegal.com right now and 24 hours a day. So that's onecalllegal.com. They handle all kinds of legal cases. That obviously includes traffic tickets, personal injury, and much, 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 much more. So reach out to the good people, Mendy, David, Eric, and everybody over at Seltzer Mayberg, onecalllegal.com. And now, on with today's emergency episode. Welcome to Five on the Floor, a Miami Heat and NBA podcast from Ethan Skolnick with Alvon Sydney, a.k.a. Alf954. Brought to you by the Five Reasons Sports Network. All right, Ethan Skolnick back here on Five on the Floor. We were not planning on recording today, although I guess we should have, Alf, because I said on a podcast with Alex the other day that I anticipated that the Heat would likely break some Dion Waiters news during the Dolphin game. Uh, they, have this habit, <laughs> they have this habit lately. It's kind of the news dump, right? Like they did the, the last Dion Waiters suspension was put out there on a Friday night. So this one's put out Sunday at roughly 5 o'clock, and I have more details on it, Alf. So let me just get right to it, and then we'll get to your viewpoint on it. Uh, Ten-game suspension for Dion Waiters. Remember, he's already been suspended once this season. Now, this comes after the, what we're, I guess we're calling gummy gate, right? Like this was uh, supposedly him eating some kind of an edible on a flight uh, when he was with the team on the West Coast. They ruled him out of the game early on, reportedly, and I, this has come from several sources now, whether it's Brian Windhorst or Shams uh, Tremania or, or um, Andy Slater, who actually had it first, who's a local radio host, that uh, essentially you know, he had some kind of a panic attack. Now, Andy didn't call it a panic attack. He called it a seizure. Uh, it's since been referred to as a panic attack. And so you know, it was clear that there was going to be something from this. 10-game suspension. Then the report comes – before before the 10-game suspension, a report came out essentially that maybe someone on the plane, some teammate had given Dion the gummy uh, or whatever the edible was. But yeah, can, we, can we say edible? Because gummy just sounds so silly right now. <laughs> well, 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 people thought that the gummies – of course, gummies can be edibles. But, like, yeah. um, I mean, if you've ever been to a dispensary in Vegas, not that I have. Uh, but, uh, you know, they, they, they can be – they can, they can be edibles, but but the thing about it is that, you know, when people said gummy at first, like, there were people on Twitter who legitimately thought it was just like a regular gummy bear. He, he did not OD. I mean, I know Dion, you know, people got on him about the weight, but he didn't OD on regular gummy bears. Um, that's not what happened here. But, 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 but also, I mean, like M&Ms, right? But, but chocolate sprinkles. But, but look, but, 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 but look the, the thing about this was that, I thought, his, I thought his, uh, his vice was spaghetti, so... This, yeah, spaghetti and spaghetti and meatballs, right? Penny a la vodka. No, it wasn't any of those things. Um, but uh, it, it was confusing because you know, first is seizure, and that seems very serious. You know, then panic attack seems somewhat serious. But l- let me let me sort of put this into some context. And by the time this podcast comes out, I will have appeared on um, Seven Sports Extra on WSVN, where I'm going to actually be regularly from now on. And I did reveal some of this on there. But essentially, I was told that this incident on the plane is not really, yes, it precipitated this suspension, but it's not really the cause of the suspension. Um, It just happens to be the latest embarrassing incident. But I was told today by a couple people inside the organization that there have basically been at least five things since the start of the season. Now, two of them, uh, it's not the start of the season, I'm excuse me, it's the start of training camp. Two of them have been reported. Uh, One of which was sort of him being upset, you know, on the bench during a preseason game and talking about Eric Spolstra in a way you shouldn't be talking about the head coach in earshot of other coaches and players. Uh, That was one. The other one, of course, was the IG comments, right? He was posting all over IG accounts called Heat versus Haters and others like that, like trolling Instagram and to post, you know, basically sort of mocking Tyler Hero, but also his head coach, Eric Spolster, right? So those were two things. I've heard there's at least two others. <laughs> um, now, I don't have all the specifics on those, but I've heard there's at least two others, and at least one of them was as bad as the other two. So then this would be five. Now, that's after they gave him a clean slate, Alf, because 
there were incidents last year that didn't get out, but I was told the slate was cleaned, you know, this off season. So, and a lot of those were conditioning related last year. So here we are, and it's a 10 game suspension. The other thing that I was told, it's not that they're having trouble trading him. There literally has been zero interest, zero zip, zilch, nada. Okay. Not yet. Okay. N nothing. Okay. There's been no interest in Dion waiters whatsoever. Not no, but not even with attaching an asset. There's literally no interest. So just to put into context, I don't think I've ever heard the Heat organization angrier at another player. Consider what they did today. And not even Hassan Whiteside. Not Michael Beasley. I could tell you Michael Beasley stories for days, okay? They, they, not Gerald Green. They've never been angrier with a player that I can recall. And, and basically, think about what they did, Alf. They took a player who already had no value, who... And they just submarined any potential value that he'll possibly have. Yep. And they did this. They did this before the league even weighs in, because I was told that the whole thing on the plane is a league matter. It's not really a team matter. It's going to be a league matter. Now, also, you know, look, again, I was told the thing on the plane was not the biggest of all these incidents. But think about it. And this is the way someone put it to me. I mean, what if you're in that kind of state? And you try to open a door on a plane. Right. I mean, it's just it's not just that he he or allegedly allegedly sort of freaked out, but it's where he freaked out. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's it's not as it's not it's not a safe environment. It's not a locker room. It's you're up at 50,000 feet. You know, it's so that's the facts as I know them. Um, you put that into some context from your perspective. It just seems that a bad situation just got worse. And it's almost, it's almost like you look at, okay, how can you compound this situation more than it's already been compounded? You've you got a guy that has a, uh, almost two full years left on his contract. The contract is not an exorbitant amount, but it's a lot to be paying a guy who is not contributing to your team. It's $12 million a year. And it's actually a guy who could help some other teams. So you had a guy that maybe he comes into the season, second or third guy off the bench, Averages 12, 13 points a game. And then by December, you could ship him off somewhere and all sides are happy. But instead of that happening, what you've had is just gigantic cluster bleep at this point. And just the icing on the cake was this incident on the plane. So I think a lot of people are missing the point here. And I think you kind of put it out there that this is not just about what happened on the plane. What happened on the plane is just the straw basically that broke the camel's back. And that's what it seems like to me. Where it's like, dude, we keep giving you chances, all right? Um, you, you had conditioning issues. We brought you back. You talk crap about the head coach on Instagram. We brought you back. You talk crap about the head coach on the bench. We brought you back. We keep giving you these chances. We keep making you active and then let you go uh, ride a bike in the basement of the arena. And after all of this, somehow – you are the only NBA player to ever take an edible and have a panic attack on a plane because I'm <laughs> sure there are other NBA players out there you taking think? edibles. You think? I mean, everybody that leaves the Nuggets, <laughs> the Nuggets arena is probably high. But somehow, <laughs> you are the one that got, had a panic attack on the airplane. And it had to be Dion Waiters. It's like, it's literally, if it wasn't for, it's like, if it wasn't for bad luck, he'd have no luck at all. And it's right. sad because, honestly, I wanted a good – I really expected something big out of Dion this year because he's in a great – he has a great opportunity to showcase his skills against second units on other teams. But instead of looking at it that way, he – you know, I, I don't want to – you know, I don't want to go in too deep like I know everything that's going on in Dion Waiter's world. But it seems from the outside looking in, he looked at he, – he didn't look at it as an opportunity. He looked at it as a slap in the face. And instead of making something out of it, he's completely torpedoed his career at this point. I mean, the thing is, Alf, it feels like Antonio Brown, right? I mean, I, it, it, except the only difference is he doesn't have the, the talent level of, Anto of Antonio Brown, right? So, I mean, he has a guaranteed contract, which, you know, with Antonio Brown, he kind of had one, right? But he ended up losing all that guaranteed money because in the NFL, nothing's guaranteed for real. But, I mean, that's what this feels like. It feels like a meltdown, right? And so I, I think what's, what's happened is the Heat, this, I, told, I said before the season, this was a no-tolerance season for the Miami Heat. You saw it with James Johnson. James Johnson did not fail the conditioning test. He did not fail it. 
there's just this other standard that Pat Riley had beyond the conditioning test <laughs> that James Johnson did not meet. Like this is this is the whole thing. Like they, they're not taking any shit. And I I've said before I think some of this uh, is to prove a point to their star player who they want. To, to commit to this thing in a real way long term and he, it appears that he has and they want to show him this is the way that we do things and they're just not going to take it and I, I think the big difference between now and the past is they're being really public about this stuff that's not them I, I've, I've covered this team in some way since 1996 I mean it's 23 years okay that's not them like uh, they used to take care of the stuff behind the scenes stuff happened with Michael Beasley trust me okay I can tell you about boats and all kinds of other stuff and all kinds of crazy stuff. Okay. Stuff happened, but it like, it didn't get out until like after one of Beasley's three stints, like you'd find out later. Okay. Now everything's getting out. And when I've talked to, I, I talked to two people inside the organization today who, who use the exact same phrasing. We fucking had enough. That's it. Okay. And so I, that's where they are right now. And I don't really know. I mean, I don't get the sense because I know people have tried to reach his representation. I have not. But I know people have tried to reach his representation and gotten nowhere with it. I don't know who's act advocating for him. And look, when, when you get his to this mom point, on Instagram, well, well, yeah, I see. Here's the thing about Dion. I mean, I, I've said this before. Like, I don't know Dion well. I, I was in Cleveland that first year that. Uh, LeBron went back and he got traded pretty quickly. And I said that people inside the organization uh, said it was addition by subtraction, even though they liked him personally, like they liked him personally. They think he's like, I, even, even after he traded him. Okay. And I, I'm not, this is not a, a school. David Griffin said to me, I think Deion Waiters is a great kid. They, they liked him personally. But and when you talk to anybody else in there, they were like, we had to get him out of there. Like they, people were, gonna, were pulling their hair out. I and mean, LeBron doesn't have any hair, and he was pulling it out. Like they, 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 they had had enough. I, I talked about that one story. I walked in the locker room in Washington um, early in that season when the, when the you know, remember, remember that, that Cavs team started 19 and 20, right? And, and I've said this before. They had to go out and get the stability of J.R. Smith to replace the other waiters, okay? Because I walked in that locker room in Washington, and first thing, Dion and Kyrie never really got along, or at least didn't appear to. And you know, and look, that was the game that basically Dion and Kyrie were dribbling in circles. It was like they were doing pirouettes. I don't know what they were doing. And I walked in the locker room, and again, I had a relationship with LeBron from the four years in Miami, and he knew why I was up there, basically because of him, because of that relationship. So I would sometimes sort of gauge his temperature, and I'd walk. I walked in the locker room that day. And I caught his eye, and he had his – LeBron was facing the, the – sort of the, the way the Washington locker room works is when you walk in, it's like a little sort of walkway to get to the locker room itself. But when you walk in, you can see the players that are on that side of the bench because they're all on the same side of the bench, okay? They're, I mean, there's, there's two basically – there's two rows, one and then the other one's facing the other. So LeBron was facing – and I caught LeBron's eye, and he had his he had he had his eyes down, okay, like his head in his hands, okay. They got blown out by the Wizards, okay, dribbling in circles. And I walked in and I caught LeBron's eye, and he just looked at me and shook his head and goes, "These mfers." And you knew who he was talking about, <laughs> yeah. okay. Um, and and so you know, and then they traded Dion, and remember that team took off and made the finals and might have won the championship if Kyrie and Love don't get hurt during the playoffs. So. There's a history of this with Dion. They got duped. I said it when they signed him. You know, Pat, Dion said the word culture a few thousand times. He wrote a piece for uh, Players' Tribune. He reminded them of Dwayne with some of those late moments. He was really good during the 30 and 11 run. He's a likable person. I know I, I spent a lot of time with, his high, with his, one of his elementary school teachers uh, in the school right across the street from a brownstone where Dion grew up, where he used to play basketball. Everybody in Philadelphia loves him. He gives back to that community. He's not a bad person, but something's not clicking here. Something's not clicking here, Alf, because they made it clear what they wanted, and it's like he's trying to work his way out of here, but if he is – like <laughs> he's making it impossible. They want to accommodate him, <laughs> but they can't. But all uh, Ethan, all he had to do was come off the bench and score twelve a game. I know, and he would have been gone by December fifteenth. I know. I don't I know. even get it. And now, 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 my bigger question is: Does he sign the? Uh, does he sign his player option, or does he think? Does he do the? You know. Bet on yourself and double down this summer. He can't. He can't. The last time he did I that, I couldn't but, imagine. But, but Alf, the last time he did that, remember, he actually had a pretty decent playoff run with OKC, and he clicked uh, personality-wise with Westbrook and Durant. But I mean, Durant loved him. 
right by all and Westbrook doesn't doesn't click doesn't, with anybody he and, doesn't get and, a vet minimum contract next season does he but look after that happened Alf he played meaningful playoff minutes like like down the stretch minutes for a very good team with Westbrook and Durant and remember what the heat gave him 2.7 yep okay and so then he has the make good year and to his credit and the organization really fell for a lot of it and a lot of it was positive and I just, I just don't, I just don't get it. I, I don't, I don't understand. And I'm not talking about the the plain thing, like you said. I mean, look, 80% of the NBA smokes weed or, or takes some sort of, you know, weed infused product. Okay, I mean, I, you know, I mean, let's just be honest. I've covered the league forever. Okay, and I mean, it's, it's, the the country is turning around on this thing pretty quickly. Like, all right, who I, cares? I, 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 I mean, you and that I. That edible be, was bought legally, remember? So correct. I mean, you and I are going to be hypocrites on this. I'm not. I'm not going to be. Okay. I mean, I. I. I'm, we look. We have a. I mean, we should have had them actually as an endorser of this particular episode. Maybe <laughs> we should actually. You know what? We should do that. I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna do a Dutch Valley Farm ad before the end of this because they're a sponsor of us. I don't have any. I don't have any issue with with that i think i think marijuana should be legal okay uh so I, I i have no issue with it whatsoever it's not that that i'm referencing and it's not really that that the heat's angry about you think the heat's naive about that you think seriously Listen. i mean they, i mean think of the guys they've had on that roster okay come on <laughs> think think of, think of what think of what happened with beasley and rio you know in the in in rookie orientation okay look it, it's it, that's not the issue here that's not what's what's bothering the heat is that like you said they feel like they've given him chance after chance after chance and he's just keeps doing things that are in the, their words detrimental right you know conduct detrimental to the organization it's like they have they have you know 13 guys pulling in one quote unquote culture direction i think i cuz i think even jj is now all right and then they have one guy who's pushing against it the and they're just, not, thing, they're just not going to tolerate it. Not post, not in the post-white side, you know, America, basically, or or, or South Florida. This, the saddest thing, Ethan, is not about detrimental to the team. It's self-destructive. That's honestly the angle I look at it is I'm just like, I feel really bad for this guy. Like, because by all accounts, he's a, he's a decent human being. He's a nice guy. But there's something there that's not clicking. I don't know if it's – maybe it's that same ego that's gotten him this far. It's actually is, – is a detriment to him now. But it's 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 sad to watch. It's sad to watch the guy that we watched go thirty and eleven, hit a bunch of big shots to the point now. There's no, I doubt he's even on the bench for the rest of for the rest of his career with the Miami Heat. I don't, I doubt he'll ever sit on the bench again. I was told today uh, that the chances of he actually suiting up for the Heat again to play is is under twenty percent at this point. Um, and and about about a week ago, I was told it was about forty percent. Do you want so, him around Tyler Hero, Kendrick Nunn? No, I mean, no. So, at, 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 at this point, Akpala, like well, do you want him around your young well, guys? Well, I, at this point, I I don't know. I mean, he may be palling around with them behind the scenes. I mean, that's the other thing. I mean, he had relationships on this team. I I, I don't know what's going. On. I mean, I don't. I'm, I wasn't on this road trip, so I can't speak to the. I'll be on some trips later this season, but I I wasn't on this trip. I can't speak to the interactions. I you know I know that sometimes a lot of stuff what's happening on the court doesn't really affect the personal relationships off the court, right? So yeah. I so so it, it it's very possible that he's still palling around with these guys. But there is, like I said, they got – Spolster and Riley got on the same page with Dion very quickly to the point that I pointed it out at, at Spolster's presser, okay, which, you know, for media day and, and the postseason presser where he basically said, you know, you know, look, Dion, you know, needs to get with the program. And that's not something – it's something Pat Riley says. It's not something that Eric Spolster says. So they've been on the same page with this from the beginning. And, and, and the real – to me, the real red flag, and no one's talked about this one because there were only three reporters from outside – there were other Heat TV people, only three reporters from outside the organization that were there that day. This is why we try to show up. Alex Toledo, as you know, Tropical Blanket, me, and Anthony Chang were up in West Palm and I'm going to find these videos, but we were up in West Palm for that last Saturday. And that was the day everybody was trying to get out of training camp because, you know, there was a, uh, there was a Canes game that night. Okay. I, and so our Canes game that afternoon. And so there were some heat personnel that were getting down to the Canes game. I am Adam Simon, some others, and some of the players. And so it was very brief. Uh, it was briefer um, in terms of the, the player availability than some of the other days had been because, we were basically done, right? It was the end of the week. Everybody's looking to get out of West Palm. It's not like the Bahamas, right? So, so uh, you know, basically there were two things that came up that day where, you know, where basically Eric Spolster was asked about, you know, being in heat shape, right? 
and he said that uh, he said that Dion was not was in shape, but was not in heat shape. And Dion took offense to that. And then there was the other one where I asked Spolstra about you know Dion's kind of menu offensively and whether or not you know he wanted him taking as many threes as he did late last season. And, you know, and all the rest. Of, and then I went back to Dion and asked about it. And Dion basically said, you know, went on this sort of anti-analytics rant, right, about how, you know, if the guy goes under the screen, you know, you have to just shoot it, and this and that. So it was clear to me, those two things, that they were not on the same page on either of those things, conditioning or what Dion's offensive kind of menu was going to be this year. So now add that to the playing time stuff, right? Which obviously became the big issue. And now there's some sort of a substance thing, which is not unusual, like I said, but it, it, it's embarrassing for the organization. It's just, and I, like I said, there's two, there's at least two things that, that happened that they're not talking about. Like they, they've decided, the Heat's decided it's not worth it. Like the, the, why throw Dion even more under the bus than he is? But there are at least two other things, okay? And the, it'll get out eventually. And so it, it's just, we are where we are. Like I, you know, it's, and it's, it's unfortunate. And, you know, I, I root for guys, like you said, I root for guys like this. I think play, people can be misunderstood. Trust me. I understand that from my perspective. Okay. But I just, at this point, I don't know what the organization does other than just banish him. That's all they can really do. Right. Yep. I mean, just banish him and hope a team has an injury and gets desperate and you can get 50 cents on the dollar. That's the best you can do at this point. Yeah. And that's, that's, that sucks. It's, if you're if you're a Heat, let's, from the Heat fan standpoint, that's twelve million dollars on your cap. Because I think we both agree, there's no way that he opts out over the summer unless pride just takes hold. Because he's not going to get anything but a vet minimum anywhere else. If that, most likely it's going to be at some chi- China or Greece or you know on some other international league. He's not getting twelve million from anybody else. So he's going to opt into his deal, and that's going to be. It's $12 million just on your cap that's just not going to be able to be touched. And right now, this team could use another scorer off the bench. But I could, especially, especially, you know, with Kendrick struggling some. They could and use a healthy Dion Waiters right now. They really could. They, they, they could, but, I mean, it has to be a healthy, you know, situation for healthy the Healthy, engaged Dion Waiters. And, right, and right now it's not. So, anyway, that's our emergency podcast on Dion Waiters. I'll be at practice on Monday. Um, you know, and, and we're, we're going to put up my appearance on WSVN on YouTube. So check out our YouTube channel. I mean, we're getting a lot of traction there. Um, also, I want to make one announcement just because I know that some are, uh, know that I've had an association with Maven Sports Illustrated. Uh, that is, that is uh, no longer. Um, and so we're going to be putting even more content on FiveReasonSports.com. So look for, again, weekly columns from Greg Sylvander on the Heat every Tuesday. Nikias Duncan's going to start jumping in. Christian Hernandez jumped in last week. Me and Alf are going to start writing. We've got Zach Buckley. So we're going to have a lot of Heat content on FiveReasonSports.com, and that is free. But first, before we go, i got to do it. We have another great sponsor of the Five Reasons Sports Network, Dutch Valley Farms. For starters, they're not your average cannabis grow farm. They've got deep roots in the 305 Hometown group of doctors, CPAs, and Silicon Valley professionals have taken their talents from the 305 to the 503 to make you the finest flower out there. How does Miami find itself all the way out in Oregon? Simple, a team with a shared belief in cannabis research and erasing the stigma behind the bud. Today, the Dutch Valley Farms crew is bringing together old school growing practices with new school tech to deliver a consistent, clean, high quality experience you can feel good about. The proof is in the plant. You want more information? Visit DutchVF.com or follow them on Instagram at Dutch Valley Farms. That's just to show you, we don't have an issue with that. Not it's at the, all. It's, it's the other stuff. Anyway, thanks for joining no us. No panic we'll attacks. Have, no panic attacks. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, have, we'll have a new podcast up for you sometime between uh, now and the game against Detroit, which, by the way, we're expecting Blake Griffin to play. So we'll see what goes on.